all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen 15. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Young Guns class of 2021. So if you are new to our channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification. And as soon as new videos are released, you'll be the first to know. So let's get into it with a quick introduction. As long-term followers of this channel know, each year at the end of the South African season, we pick five players who we refer to as our Young Guns. And these guys, we track each and every year and check out what's happening in their career and see how good our predictions were. So this started in 2018 and we believe that, you know, so far so good. And it's not that we're experts, guys. It just actually more than anything showcases the depths of talent in South Africa that even, uh, you know, fans basically like us can, uh, you know, sort of pick it out. It just There's a lot of talent in South Africa. I'm sure that is no secret. Um, and also more than happy that we miss a few players and sort of get it wrong, so to speak. You know, I mean, that's a challenge with something like this. Um, I think it's very easy to refer to yourself as an expert, um, as a lot of people do. We don't. We always just say we're enthusiasts. We're not experts. Um, but a lot of people that like to think of themselves as experts don't put their, um, you know, their name on the line and actually do something like this and make their predictions. Um, you know, there's a lot of risk involved in it, but we see it as a bit of fun as well. I mean, whether you think this improves or uh, takes away our credibility, it's just a matter of perspective, basically. Um, so further to this, we broaden our selection and um, it's, we saw also include dark horses, which are sort of athletes that, um, you know, that didn't quite make the top five, but we think that uh, could really have dark horse careers and go really far. Obviously, number one prospects, we've only named so, uh, two so far, and the v uh, MVP competition and all those winners are going to be discussed today as well. So we need to first obviously do a shameless plug, guys. Um, if you are a player looking to get some exposure, haven't got a contract yet, looking to sort of connect with um, agents or uh, recruiters in general, sign up for an account at the Talent Hub. Uh, link will be in the description down below. Alternatively, just head to our website, uh, www.nextgenxv.com. Uh, click on the Talent Hub as a link and uh, just send an inquiry form and someone will get back in touch with you. So far, we've had a lot of interest in this. Um, we've got some very exciting announcements to make in the next couple of weeks of some major institutions that will join up. Um, and, um, you know, this is, this is basically for you guys. It's in honor of the community, so to speak. So um, it's a great partnership and initiative we have together with Squilla Rugby SA, a great group of parents that are very enthusiastic about the game and share the same values as us. So please, um, if you've got a couple of minutes to spare and you are interested, whether you're a recruiter at a club or an agent or a player, just get in touch and uh, we'd be delighted to have a chat with you. But anyway, on to the video. So let's start off with our dark horses. Um, 2018 dark horse was Zander Duplessis. Um, I just loved his style of play. I really just thought he was a tremendous athlete, a deadly boot. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he really rem like reminded me of a fly-off that sort of broke outside the mold of what we expect from a traditional South African fly-off. Played with a lot of freedom. Um, has been a vital cog in the Tux machine, been a key player for them, was rewarded with uh, his fine form uh, with a contract at Griquas right now. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before he goes on to one of the major unions or even makes a move up, uh, overseas. I always believed this guy would make it and um, I still think he's on the correct path. 2019, it was Trevino Jacobs. A lot of people thought we were completely mad not naming him the top five and naming him a dark horse because he was one of the best wings in the country. And uh, he's been absolutely outstanding, guys. He's been absolutely outstanding at the Bulls. I think it's just a matter of time before this guy gets his springbok colors, to be honest with you. He's just you know, an absolutely lethal finisher. He knows where the trial line is. If you even give him a sniff, he's executing. Uh, fantastic talent and uh, looking forward to seeing what else he can do in the future. 2020, we named Jordan Fenter our dark horse. Um, Jordan's a very interesting case in terms of an athlete, very mature head on his shoulders. Um, you wouldn't guess it's his first year out of school, the way that he carries himself. Um, he actually negotiated his own contract um, with Edinburgh and um, didn't go through any agent or anything like that. 
Um, and uh, I think recently signed with Christian App from CSM, if I'm not mistaken. So good signing there for both parties. I mean, CSM is one of the biggest agencies in the world. And then Jordan has the potential to be a massive force commercially um, in the game. And uh, from what I'm hearing from various sources and all the rest of it, um, you know, there's big things happening with them. And, um, you know, there's, uh, he's very highly rated over there. He's already been formed part of the pro. Uh, URC, sorry, I'm going to stop calling it Pro 14 or 16 or whatever. He's formed part of the URC squad already. Um, had a couple of runouts for, um, uh, you know, the feeder club, Watsonians, I think it is. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how he develops. You know, I spoke a lot of him as a number six, but he's still going to make a good center. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things end up for him. And, uh, you know, for a lot of you guys that are questioning, it's a question I get a lot. Yes, he's still a tank. He's still a big boy. That's not going to change anytime soon. Those Fenta jeans are just something else, eh? 2021, um, it was a tough one, but ultimately I had to go with uh, Nick Hatton from Hilton College. I, I can't explain how much I rate this guy. He's a very interesting prospect. Um, just very, very high rugby IQ, has a great attitude about the game. I mean, spatial awareness is just out of this world. Um, you know, he's got the... Um, the running ability and the ability to open up play the same as a backline player but he's got the physicality and the strength um, of a loose forward he's just he's a total package to me and i really was disappointed the sa school selectors uh, didn't consider him i think if there was more of a season and he had a chance to showcase his ability at craven week i think a lot more people would have been speaking about him um, i think the sharks have performed a master stroke by signing him i think he's going to be a household name in the next five years and that's why i've named him the dark horse um i think a lot of people um you know because there hasn't been much of a season last year or this year probably haven't heard of nick um, but those in the know they know that this kid is something special so you know, let's see how he gets on um then number one prospects like i said we've only mentioned two so um in 2020 it was connor evans and Connor's been an absolute revelation when he's appeared for UCT. We named him in our team of the round, I think, two or three times this year. He's outstanding. And I mean, from what I understand, there's a hell of a lot of interest in the UK for him. Hopefully, he sticks around with Western Province. Hopefully, Western Province like, sort out their off the field. I want to use some four-letter words here. Their off the field uh, problems, let's say. I won't go the four-letter word because you need to retain talent like this i mean we can't lose him i mean this guy's like he's he's a he's a born star you know and he's only going to go further in the game i mean you know you must remember that he didn't have much of a 2020 season i mean he didn't have a 2020 season basically and uh 2019 played sa schools and then you know played uct varsity cup rugby and uh was like a fish in water it's just uh he was just took to it so naturally he looked like he'd been playing the competition three to four years so he's only going to develop more as time goes along and if south african rugby can't sort their rubbish out then you know there's going to be a premiership club that's going to be getting an outstanding prospect and uh you know i don't even want to think about that it'll absolutely wound me if connor leaves uh, south african shores 2021, um, as it's been well documented, we went with Luca Ribbons. Um, there were other players that were in consideration. It was a very tight vote, um, you know, between the panel. Um, I don't make these decisions just by myself. I obviously refer to a panel. Um, and the, the comment about Luca was just his maturity on the field of play. Um, you know, his first game against Monument when he was a grade 11, he just, he controlled the game so well. He was a line general, um, you know, there was a lot of physicality and a lot of back and forth in the game, a bit of argy bargy, but he always maintained his composure. You know, there's once or twice where he got bounced by one of the monument players and it never affected him psychologically. He actually just got up to his feet and he carried on playing the game. And I actually had him pegged for a SA Schools captain this year. So when he didn't even make the SA Schools squad, I was disgusted, but I've spoken about my disgust a hell of a lot. I, I think it's boring now. I don't need to go into more detail. I think, uh, you know, if I take a look at Bufana and Tleku as a coach and his vision um, and what the type of rugby he's trying to play for the team, I think Luca, may, I, I'm not sure if he'd be included in the under 20 uh, final squad, but he'll definitely be part of the training camp because I know a coach with that much vision and uh, who sees the game in a very similar light to a lot of other visionary coaches that I respect, 
definitely sees a value in someone like Luca. He can cover the loose forward role. He can cover the the lock role. He basically performs as an extra line out option. His carrying is amazing. His leadership's amazing. Um, he's a full package, and that's why we named him our number one prospect. Um, so, you know, again, it was disappointing that he didn't make the SA school squad. He was obviously disappointed he didn't make the SA school squad. I'm sure there's an expectation from his part that he'd be there. Um, but it wasn't meant to be, and these sort of challenges define character. And I do believe in this, uh, this youngster's character, and I believe that uh, it'll carry him through to the next phase of his rugby career. And if he doesn't get any love in South Africa, believe me, 90% of the clubs in France would kill for a player like that. So, uh, you know, if he, if he doesn't even make SA under 20 in the next two years, I would say to the boys, start learning French and uh, become a French international in the next five years. But I, I honestly think there's just too much quality in terms of South African, um, the co South African coaching environment, especially with these young and up-and-coming coaches. Um, if you take a look at the Lions, if you take a look at, um, you know, like I mentioned, Bufana as well, um, these guys know their stuff. And, um, you know, they'll see things very differently to SA schools. Thank goodness. Okay, um, MVP competition 2020 was Nico Stein. Um, great win for him in the competition. Um, I was so happy for him and for his family when uh, he was selected for the SA Under 20 squad. I was even happier when he scored a try in his first game. I'm pretty sure the whole Stein house absolutely erupted when this happened. And uh, he's a hell of a nice youngster, got a good head on his shoulders, um, very humble. And, um, you know, he's already a regular for the Lions under 20 team. He's making the right moves. Rumors are that he might be going to the USA. If he does, the USA have got their future international scrum off for the next 10, 15 years, potentially. Um, if he does decide to stay and fight for his place in South Africa, I don't see any reason why he doesn't go on to become uh, at least a challenger for the Springbok jersey. I know there's a lot of quality. Uh, when you take a look at Nohamba, Jaden Hendricks, uh, you've got Neil LaRue coming through. You've got Caleb Abrams coming through. Um, Imad Khan, I mean, there's a hell of a lot of plays to talk about in the scrum off booth. Um, you know, got a lot of talent coming through, but, um, you know, the first time I saw him play at that World Schools Festival, I just, I knew this kid was something special. And, um, you know, like I say, I hope he stays in fights for his place in South Africa. But if the USA, uh, if I was a part of USA Rugby and an opportunity to bring this guy over, like I said, I know that I've got my first choice scrum off, someone that can become world class for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, 2021 was won by Zuki Sonny Tom from Grey High. It was interesting this year, guys, because last year we went with a, a mix of three, right? We did a YouTube vote, a panel vote, and then an Instagram vote. And this year we just went for a straight Instagram vote after people complained about corruption with uh, our voting system last year. And like Instagram, I, I can't change the voting on there. If I could do that, I'd be quite a powerful guy, but I can't do that. So um we <laughs> it, it just happened again we just got like accused of cheating again by a lot of people so um we'll, we'll relook at the, the the structure next year um to spread it across but zuki was very very good and he served as um a benchmark for other youngsters out there to you know he's grade 11 now um his playing ability to those in the know it's there he's a fantastic young talent he's definitely going places some people call him the next Sia Kulisi. it's a matter of perspective um but in terms of uh, how he sort of utilizes his social media presence i think a lot of young players uh, undervalue that there's a lot of guys that never made the team that are, you know, high quality players. They never even made the dream team. Some of them never even made it past the first round because they don't know how to leverage their social media network. And in the 21st century, whatever any old school teacher or old school coach wants to tell you, they're talking out of their backside. You've got to get, you've got to get with the program in terms of your social media profile and learn how to utilize that because the opportunities that can come from that in terms of getting noticed, in terms of sponsorship and all the rest of it, it's it's up you know you've got a very short career as a as a professional rugby player you know and you've you've got to use every opportunity you can and that's one of the things of the competition like this the guys that actually made it far were the guys that utilized their social media network and got through to the voting stages those guys that thought they deserved to be there on name alone didn't go through so it's definitely a lesson to be learned for the young players anyway let's move on um so we're going to go through um, the young guns now and we're going to start with the class of 2018 and see where they are with their career. 
So first up was uh, Adrian Alberts. Um, Adrian was an absolute star at Paul Boys um, in 2018. It wasn't their best season, but he was part of the uh, 2017 unbeaten team. He was SA School's captain, moved over to the Lions, a lot of expectation. But apparently there's been quite a few injury problems, but now he's in recovery. He's making, uh, you know, he's training hard. He's starting to make a comeback. And you must remember that he's um, obviously only going to be 21 now. So he's still got time on his side and hopefully he can still develop. But in terms of where he stands right now, um, it, it just remains to be seen. He's obviously at a critical juncture in terms of his career, um, but no doubt the talent's there. Um, then we've got Darren Hendricks. He was at Boylan Lampo. Um, D Darren was a standout for me. I mean, his running from uh, from the back was unreal. I mean, he could sidestep like nobody's business. He found space where it was very difficult to find space. Someone that I rated extremely highly. And um, from what I understand, he's left the Sharks. He's basically back home and he's reassessing things. Um, but from what I understand, he's uh, not very keen to, uh, to continue his rugby career. Maybe I could be wrong. Someone can send a message to me if I'm wrong and I can uh, obviously issue a correction. But um, he was a very special player, someone that I was very entertained by. And I was very confident that he was going to go all the way. So... You know, hopefully he can pick himself up. Hopefully that there's a club out there watching this right now that has been willing to take him on and give him a chance because you just don't lose that natural ability. I mean, I think that sometimes you can lose your enthusiasm for the game, but you can't, you're never going to lose that natural ability, surely. Next up, um, Ivan Riss. What a whirlwind it's been for Ivan. I mean, if you think about last year in terms of the um, under-21 championship, the Sharks were disappointing, and I think Ivan will even... Uh, you know, concede that he didn't have the best tournament that he's ever had. Um, and then fast forward to this year, the guy's already been talked about as a Springbok prospect. And out of the class of 2018, um, by far the, the most prevalent player right now, he's absolutely outstanding. He has to be a consideration for the South African end of your tour. Seriously, I mean, I know there's a lot of guys out there that rate Jasper Visser, but the guy concedes way too many penalties for my liking. And to me, Irvin is the heir apparent to the throne for Dwan van he's, he's going to be a springbok. It's 100% certain. So when you've got these people saying, no, it's too early for him, don't rush him in, that's all rubbish. He's going to be there one day, so at least let him be part of the culture. You don't have to start him. Um, in any of the tests necessarily you bring him on the tour get him adapted to the team environment give him five to ten minutes run on in the first couple of matches look at the blueprint for what new zealand does and how they blood their youngsters they don't throw people in the deep end they slowly integrate them into the team environment and even time is right now in my opinion um then Andre Jacobs, this is a head scratcher as well. This guy's an absolute monster when it comes to the scrums and uh, that hasn't changed. I've, I still haven't seen anyone brutalize his opposition in terms of scrummaging alone like he did. I mean, that poor wrist front row with him and JJ Kotzer, it was, it was bordering on abuse what they did to uh, the Ford Packs. And uh, again, you don't lose that. You, do, you don't just lose that. So I, I've got no idea why he isn't um, at least, you know, making a few appearances for the Sharks by now. But uh, he should be there and thereabouts. I mean, again, it's a case of you just don't lose that talent. And I mean, I saw him in the, uh, the under-21 competition last year. He still got that powerful scrumming ability. And some of the guys that he out last year are, are in the URC squad. So it's quite a head scratch to, you know, to determine what's going on over there. Then finally, um, David Kellerman. Um, this it was a sin that this guy never made SS schools. I was I was very, you know, back then when I when I first started the channel, I didn't really care about what what anyone thought. So I did use a f couple of four letter words over there when it came to him not being selected for SS schools. I was disgusted by that. He was definitely the form center um, of Craven Week back then, and um, from what I understand, you know, the Bulls he was very highly rated, but wasn't given a look in, and apparently heading over to Japan. Um, who knows, maybe you'll be a brave blossom in a couple of years. He's definitely got the ability to play international rugby. Um, but you know, the problem in South Africa is there's only really four franchises that can afford to like, contract anybody. So places are, you know, the competition for the places is very intense. But, uh, you know, if he is going to Japan, wish him all the luck there. Moving on to the 2019 class, uh, Marcel Muller. I understand that he might be going to America. If I was him, I would jump on that plane and go there right now. Three to five years, however long residency takes, then he's an American international player. 
you know, he makes one appearance for the Cheetahs, scores two tries, doesn't get another look in, hasn't featured in the under-21 tournament. He wasn't appreciated and respected in Montpellier. He wasn't respected and appreciated, uh, well, he's not been respected and appreciated at the Cheetahs, even though he promised, he was promised that he would be respected and appreciated. Um, he hasn't been. So it's time for him to move on, in my opinion. You, uh, you know, this is the thing that makes me angry, you know, when I, when I start speaking to people that think they're in the know. They start talking about the technicality side of the game and all the rest of it. Take a look at Juan van Ameva. They talk the same rubbish about him, about, you know, uh, you know his, his technical skills aren't quite there. What technical skills do you need when you're a monster? You know, you basically run over people and score tries. That's what he did for Gray College, and that's what he could have done for Montpellier, and that's what he could have done for the Cheetahs. He's a try scoring machine. He just needs, uh, uh, you know, game time. But from what I understand, he might be joining uh, Hanukkah Mad to Saber Cats, and Wassal, you are the one, one of the few players where I'll just say, get out of South Africa. You are not going to be appreciated there. I've seen nothing so far. Again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's injured. Maybe, uh, you know, there's some other type of issue. Let me know in the comments section down below. I don't have very good contacts at the Cheetahs. Very close shop over there for a SOTI, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, but based on what I've seen so far, uh, for, for me, he has to go. Um, Jan Hendrik Vessels, interesting one. Huh? Interesting one because... Um, Scrummage, scrummage in there after school level just hasn't been there. Uh, he hasn't been tested. Um, he did a lot of bullying, bullying at school in terms of the in terms of the scrums with the other players. Um, loved to run with the ball, but he's been moved to hooker, and I think it's going to be a position that's going to suit him very, very well. It reminds me a lot of uh, the old Bulls uh, hooker Strauss. It reminds me a lot of him, and I think he could have a very similar profile and future to him. So all is not lost, but I definitely think in terms of being a loose head prop, um, I, I definitely think the scrum engine is just not quite there, and I don't think it's going to develop um, anytime soon. So Jake White is a master of these type of things. In Jake, we trust. So, uh, you know, let's see how it goes. Um, then Jared Taylor. Um, Jared is part of the under 20 squad. Um, wanted to leave because of, you know, wanted to focus on his studies apparently. I don't know what the full story was there. Maybe some politics, who knows. Um, still a massive player. Um, absolutely dominating for Western Province at the moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he'll be a key. I think he'll really stand out next year when he starts playing for Marty's and uh, makes more of a presence fault. Um, but everything's still there. I mean, the, the, the guy was a monster at school level and nothing's really changed in my opinion. Um, so I think, I think he's still on the right track. Um, then Jacques Huisson. Jacques was uh, part of the SN20 squad. Um, I loved, I've spoken about it a lot. I loved it when Bafana moved him to number six. I thought he was outstanding. I think he can become even a better version of Heinrich Brousseau in that position. Um, but, you know you, take, you know, you know, you take a look at that and then all of a sudden uh, in the um, under 20 championship, he's the leading try scorer in the tournament. So... I mean, what what do you do with that information? You know what I mean? The, the, the guy's a great player as well and uh, definitely on the right track. Great leader, great player, very physical guy. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he's utilized. But yeah, definitely on the right track. And then finally, Cade Volhuter. Um, unfortunately, Cade was injured, you know. Um, horrible injury this year, but he was definitely on the right track. So if you take a look at my young guns 2019, um, K definitely would have been in the S under 20 squad and the other three were in the S under 20 squad. Jared walked out. Um, so the only guys that actually played any matches were Jacques and uh, Jan Hendrik. But if you think about it on a technicality, I would basically score myself four out of five for this. Um, uh, all of them would have featured if Cade wasn't injured and if uh, you know Jared didn't want to concentrate on his varsity stuff and academics a bit more, from what I understand, that that's official party line. Um, then of course uh, there would have been four guys, and I still think, for me personally, I would have loved to have seen Marcel there, you know, like a real bolter, just uh, you know, give the opposition something they've never seen before. But uh, you know, who's, who knows what's going to happen with that? But Cade is definitely on the right track. Fantastic young talent. Um, a lot of people feel, feel he's the heir apparent to the Andre Pollard throne um, and time will tell whether they're right or wrong. Class of 2020, um, Mambo Mkize was selected for S under 20 this year. I've, I really felt bad for him because, uh, you know, I, I named him as the best, well, we named him as the best and, uh, 
you know, schoolboy inside centre in the world last year, and that's because his handling skills, his distribution, um, the, the way he puts his teammates in space, everything. This guy's a complete package, believe me. But the problem was is that, um, you know, he was playing in atrocious weather that didn't complement his skills. And look, it's something that he's going to have to develop in his game, but he's still young, so it's, he has to be encouraged to make the mistakes. Um, now's the time to make the mistakes, obviously. So he needs to get used to those wet uh, and horrendous conditions, especially if we're going to be playing more rugby in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but I, I just think, it, you know, if he was given the right conditions in his first game, um, it would have given him a lot more confidence in the games that followed. But he's still, he's still going to have to, I'm still going to have to say, I still think he's an outstanding talent and uh, someone that's going to go very far in the game. So... Um, you know, we'll see. He's definitely going to be part of the S under 20 reckoning next year. So let's just see what happens with that. Uh, Sasha Mgomozulu, uh, part of S under 20 squad as well. Um, he's, you know, in the few appearances that he's had and the few chances that he's had in terms of um, uh, the, the under 20 championship. Um, he's been absolutely outstanding for Western Province, had two very good weekends. Um, goal kicking is improving, distribution still there. Um, and I thought he had a very decent game for the South African under-20 team. I still like the fact that he's willing to take risks. He's willing to put himself on the line. And I think it's just going to make him a more complete flower. -off. I think it's going to be very difficult in the future to choose between him and Cade. I think they're just both very outstanding um, talents. Uh, the next was Josh van Frieden. Unfortunately, Josh suffered from injury this year. So he didn't have a lot of game time um, in terms of the under-20 tournament. Um, but, you know, the first game that he came back, he scored a trial off the bench, from what I understand. So, you know, the talent is still there, the time is still there, and uh, I think it'll be an interesting tussle between him and uh, Mouton next year to see who's uh, started for the South Africa under-20. Um, very interesting, both very great players. Um, then Sizonke Vumazonke made a lot of appearances for Lions under-20 this year as a 19-year-old. Um, I'm quite disappointed he wasn't considered for the um, South African under-20 squad. I think he's definitely a shoe in next year, perhaps even potentially a captain next year. So it would have been nice to have seen him uh, be given a bit more of a chance and uh, at least be exposed to the team environment. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And then uh, finally, Kerwin Goetze. Um, uh, I mean, another guy that we named to the world schools 15 last year um absolutely outstanding pace great finisher um just wasn't wasn't the right conditions for him again but he was selected for the s under 20 team as a 19 year old so if you take a look at our record here we've basically got a three out of five which is i, I don't think bad especially when you consider that josh was injured um you don't know josh could have definitely been part of the, the part of that plan so we'll see but um yeah i mean this, this is a very talented group, so let's see what they get up to next year. Then obviously the moment you've all been waiting for, the class of 2021. Um, so first player we named was uh, Neil LaRue, and has to be. I mean, the way that he controlled the game for uh, the few games that he played for Oakdale was absolutely unreal. I mean, Neil's an absolutely lethal talent. Um, there's a lot of competition at the Bulls where he's going to be heading next year in terms of the scrum off berth. But this is the type of guy, two, three years down the line, could be a regular. Um, he's, he has to be part of the Junior Springbok setup next year. He's just an unbelievable talent. And, uh, you know, someone supremely confident that he's going to go all the way. Just really a, 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 a very gifted player and part of a generational Oakdale Lundbo team. Um, then Blocky's Lavagna. I mean, this guy was a bolter this year. Uh, I mean, obviously I'd heard of Corne Lavagna before this year started. I knew that this year's Paul Jim was going to be interesting. I predicted a third or fourth, uh, I think it was actually a third place finish this year. Thought it might be just a year too early for them. Um, they basically slapped me through the face and talk, showed me I didn't know what I was talking about. I, I was completely off here. And a lot of the dominance was from the front row, funny enough. Cornet is carrying his enthusiasm for the game. He's scrumming. There's hardly a weakness in his game. And the fact that he's also heading to the Bulls um, you know, especially when you consider that basically the loose set position at junior level is up for grabs um, in a way because Jan Hendrik Vessels has obviously moved to hooker. So he's got a very clear pathway. I think him and uh, Sebord Lamini are going to complement each other so well and they'll be able to play off the bench together in the future. 
Um, you know, one started, one started in one part of the bomb squad, for example. Um, but Cornet is going to go so far in the game, and he's going to mature very quickly in the game as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I really think that um, you know, just an v- outstanding character and uh, a quiet leader. You know, someone that leads from the front. So uh, I, I just think big things are awaiting this young man in his future. Uh, next up, Niels Falschenk. Um, this again falls down to leadership and perhaps silent leadership. You know, being a captain of the Grey College team and, you know, being the first team to lose since 2017, I think, um, especially for a player of Niels' pedigree, uh, it must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Lesser men, I think, with lesser character would have faltered under that pressure, but he took his team and uh, they were ready to rise to the top of the rankings after that i mean he played from the front he played his heart out you know he's a he's a good good young guy you know he's a good kid and uh, he's got great character and he's very humble and when you take a look at him like and i'm talking about off the field of play on the field of play he's a demon now eh? he plays a very very physical game and even though the the eighth man stocks are very full at the bulls um, you just know that uh, you know this guy's extremely driven, and uh, he's gonna—he's definitely gonna give those other eight men a run for their money. Uh, then we got Bryce Culvert. He's gonna be heading over the Sharks next year. Um, definitely the the form hooker in terms of South Africa. Um, he's gonna obviously face quite a bit of competition at the Sharks, but you know if you take if you take a look at how Bryce plays his game and how he approaches his game, he's an extremely physical player extremely physical player but not dirty that's what i like about him he's he's willing to get stuck in there but he plays a hard and fair game and you know what that does for your troops is that inspires them because they know that you don't have to pull you know any tricks out the bag to 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 uh to showcase what you're made of you you've got the natural ability very hard guy to take down and it's very rare to see a hook have that much of an impact on the game i mean there were games where he, he almost won the game single-handedly for Westville a couple of times, and that's a very talented team there as well, generally speaking. So you just know Bryce has got a massive future in the game and very highly rated within South African rugby. Um, definitely think that he's got to be part of the um, you know, the reckoning next year for the Junior Springboks. And then to a player who I believe, um, and this, this was the player that, I mean, we were going to name number one prospect he just missed out to Luca Ribbons. And um, if I had to bet the house, I would bet this guy would be the first out of this year's group to become a Springbok. And that is uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg from Bishops. The, the first time I saw him play properly a full game was when he was playing um, in the Western Province Rugby Day um, against Paul Jim. And Paul Jim's team that year, uh, last year was absolutely fantastic as well. But Suleiman was all over the place. I mean, he absolutely dominated that game. He stood out. He stood out on a field that had players like Hertzer, Ethan James, Matthew Jacobs, Sasham Gomazulu, Marky Ford, Ollie Jones. You're talking some special backline players. You know that that uh, um, that that's big characters that can almost make the field their own. And he stood head and shoulders above everyone in that game. And this year, moving from wing to center, the combination that he had with Bruce Sherwood was one of the best school center combinations I've seen for ages. You know, Bruce's uh, power and sheer strength opening up a little bit of space for Suleiman. And as soon as Suleiman's even got a breath of space, he takes that opportunity and he dominates with it. He goes for it. Um, genetically speaking, I mean, him and uh, I think it's his brother or cousin Munir, you know, just the the rugby playing genetics are there, and you can see that he's learned a lot from uh, from Munir, and but he still stamped his own style of play on the game. And like I said, if I had to bet the house, I would actually bet that this would be the first guy to uh, wear that green and gold jersey. I think there are a lot of people that are out there that agree with me because I cannot tell you the amount of hate mail I got when he was a named number one prospect. But as I said, I don't make the decisions myself. And I think, you know, even a guy like this will agree that Luke is deserving of it. Um, he would have been deserving of it. It was a very tough one. Rate play, both players very highly. But this year, Suleiman really, really stood head and shoulders above the other backline players in the country, especially, and really showcased his, uh, his ability and uh, 
he's going to be a household name in the next couple of years and uh, yeah so that that's that's it for our class of 2021 guys thanks a lot for taking the time to watch the video um as you guys know hindsight is 2020 so there are some glaring omissions from this uh this list i mean you just think of 2019 i mean obviously i mean based now on what i've seen you know could have found space for henko van veik on there for example 2018 jaden hendrix so, so there are obviously going to be glaring omissions um but let us know what you think like who did we miss off the list what would you would you have changed just leave a comment um down in the comment section down below and as always uh, have a fantastic week further cheers bye